Hello, welcome. In this video, we are going to prove that triangle AFB is isosceles. And you can see our diagram right here. So maybe the first thing you want to do is pause the video and try to just think about it informally, like with these givens that AD is congruent to DB and so on and so forth, how might you go about proving that AFB is isosceles? And I might suggest that you draw this diagram on your own. I'm going to just kind of screenshot it right there to make a little copy. And probably the first thing I would start doing is to highlight the triangle, sorry, that we're looking at. So AFB, let's just do that real quick. And then maybe uh, pause the video and think about what you can do. All right, so go ahead, pause the video. How can we prove that this triangle is isosceles? Okay, so let's start setting up our proof, take some of the stress of the problem off. We've got our statements, right? And we've got our reasons. And we're going to list them out as we go. Usually, um, many of the proofs will start with the givens. So I'm going to list out all of our givens that AD is congruent to DB. Those segments are congruent. Then I'm going to go over here and just take a look at that market. I'm going to erase AFB real quick. Okay, AD is right here. This is AD. And then DB is right here. So I'm just going to sketch that out for myself. Because this diagram has a lot of overlap, right? Here's A, here's D, here's B. And this helps me see that, okay, AD is congruent to DB. That means that this triangle itself is isosceles. It has two equal sides, right? Um, and that tells me that these two angles, by the way, are going to be congruent. But we'll get back to that. So AE is congruent to BC. Okay, where's that? Here's AE, okay, and here's BC. I'm not sure I want to use that yet, but I noticed that those two sides <coughs> are not a part of this triangle right here. And then CD is congruent to ED. All right, so those, the reasons for all of that is that, it, well, we're given that those things are true. Um, now, from this right away, what can we actually tell? Well, we've got um, AD and DB, we've got AE and BC, which is right here, and then CD, this segment, and ED right here. So in fact, if I mark AD right here, it's a little sloppy, let me undo that, we can do better. AD and then BD, those segments are congruent. These segments are congruent. That means that this triangle and this triangle are congruent by side, side, side. So let's say that. So triangle AED is congruent to triangle uh, BCD. Now, with this proof right here, this is by side, side, side. If you have side, 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 then um, you have congruent triangles. Um, I don't necessarily even know how I want to go from this to the isosceles triangle above. I'm just stating what I can, right? These two triangles are congruent. That's something I can state. And because of that, what are some other things that I can state? Well, uh, I have the three sides that are congruent, right? These pairs of congruent sides. What about some of the angles? And you might not be sure which angles to use. So just take a stab, give it a shot. And for example, I'm going to say that ADE and BDC are congruent. And I know that by copacetic, right? And by copacetic, I mean CPCTC. Congruent parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So angle A to D to E is congruent to angle B to D to C. And that's by cop copacetic. That's how I pronounce that. Um, OK, let's keep going. And also, um, what else can we say? Well, here I'm a little stuck, but I notice these two angles are kind of part of this bigger angle. Maybe that's going to be useful. So I'm going to point out that this angle, ADB, is congruent to itself. And that's the reflexive property. So angle ADB is congruent to itself. So we're going to break out that reflexive property, reflexive. And then, what can we do next? Well, um, if we look around and we find angle A to D to C, all right, we're getting a little bit of overlap here, but I'm talking about this angle. And we look at the angle B to D to E, which is this angle here, those are congruent too. And the property there is angle addition, right? Let me, let me undo some of that. 
if I if I added these this red piece and this green piece, right? The reds are congruent to each other. The green's congruent to itself. It's got to be the same as this angle right here. So we can say that we have um, angle ADC is congruent. I guess I switched colors there um, to angle BDE. Okay, that's reason five. Uh, reason five is angle addition. And we're almost done. Okay. Now. What, you know, what have we accomplished now? We've actually accomplished a way to look at another set of congruent triangles. So what do we have now? If we look at, and I'm, I'm going to kind of highlight this in the diagram, and then I'm going to redraw it. A to D to C, that triangle right there. What do we have? Well, we just analyze a side and angle on a side. We have AD, and we have DC down here, and this bigger angle in the middle. So I'm going to redraw that. Probably, it's probably a better idea just to copy and paste because I have a computer, but I figure you're probably doing this by hand. So let me redraw this with you. Sloppy drawing, it's okay. Right? ADC, we got this angle. That angle right there is the angle ADC, uh, which we identify in step five as being congruent to BDE. We have AD is congruent to DB, which we identify in step one, and DC uh, is congruent to um, ED over here. So I'm going to do this. So we have this triangle. I'm going to highlight that in yellow so color code match. And then we have triangle BDE, which is this one right here. And I'll use, I know, it's, I know this diagram is a mess. Sorry about that. BDE right here. So I'm going to draw that triangle out. And I often find that drawing these triangles and like separating them from this mess of a diagram really can help me. So B to D to E. And again, we have this angle here, BDE, and that's congruent to ADC. We have ED on the bottom, which is congruent to um, CD over here, and BD is congruent to AD. So by side angle side, these two triangles are congruent. So let's say that. So triangle ADC is congruent to triangle BDE, and that's by side angle side. If you have side angle side, then you have congruence. Okay. Now we're working our way up, and let me see if I can just paste in another diagram. I'll bring this down. Uh, sorry, bring this over here. Okay. So what have we been doing? Like, this seems like a really hard proof, right? Well, we're just kind of moving up through these triangles, and we don't want to forget our goal. Our goal is to prove that A, F, B over here is isosceles. So that's all we're really doing is we're working our way t t towards that triangle. So let's keep going. So uh, our next step, we can say angle DAB is congruent to angle DBA. Okay, so let's look at that. So we have D to A to B is congruent to D to B to A. How do I know that? That's because in, in these two triangles here, BD is congruent to AC. Um, sorry, it's congruent to AD, excuse me, over here. That's those two sides. And if you have two equal sides in a triangle, the angles across from them are also congruent. So usually I encourage students to write something like this. Two equal sides, then you have two congruent angles, something simple. Now we're getting closer, right? It's not the angles that we need because we need this triangle here, right? So we have this one is isosceles. Can I see the full plan to get there? Maybe not, but I'm getting closer to my goal. I'm getting, I'm working my way towards that triangle. Um, so what can we say now? Okay, so we can say that um, DAC, angle DAC, is congruent to DBE, angle DBE. So let's find that D to A to C, okay, that's this angle right here, corresponds to this DAC, is congruent to DBE over here. And that's by copacetic because we have congruent triangles, so CP, CTC. And, you know, you notice the order here, like maybe it would have made more sense to do step eight first, which follows from side, angle side, but I'm just kind of moving around the proof. I'm just trying different things until I can get what I need. And then if I have that, let me highlight that piece, uh, D to B to E, I think we can see that, oh, this little difference down here between the angles, those have got to be equal. 
So by angle subtraction, if we essentially take the bigger angle, ADB, and subtract the smaller one, EBD, and over here we have BAD, the bigger angle, and subtract the smaller one, we must be left with these little pieces down here. And then we can say, oh, two equal angles, then we have two equal sides, and AFB is finally isosceles. So at this point, I can see it. And it's okay if you can't, right? You'll build up the skills for that. And at some point, it'll occur to you where you're going with this. And it's okay if you have more steps than I do here, right? That might happen. Uh, it might take you a couple of tries, and that's okay. So I want to say B to A to F is congruent to um, angle A to B to F. And why is that? That's by angle subtraction. And you can elaborate in your proof. You can like say the steps behind angle subtraction, but this is usually a theorem established in class, and it is for us at this point. So you can just state it, and I'll know what you mean. Um, and but for your reference, if you wanted to say what the angles are that you're subtracting, that could help you. All right, finally, we're almost done. Uh, next, we know that AF is congruent to BF. What is that? That's, uh, let's go over here. AF is congruent to BF. And why is that? It's kind of the reverse of step seven. We're saying if you have two congruent angles, then the sides across from them are congruent. And then finally, step 11, triangle AFB is isosceles. We did it. Wow. So I'm going to draw that down. And we'll just say, you know, basically it's the definition of isosceles. If you have two or more equal sides, then it is an, an isosceles triangle. Okay, I'm going to zoom out. So if you want to um, look at this proof, you can see it in its entirety the way that I did this. I know it's small probably on your screen, but there's every single step. And if you want, let me try to get the whole thing there. I don't know if this is useful. Maybe that's just ridiculously small for you, but there's the whole thing. I'll pause here in case you want to take a screenshot or something. And then I'll zoom in a little bit more in case that's not um, visible. So this is the whole proof all at once. And I would expect to see many different diagrams throughout, right? You're kind of taking apart this complex shape until you can understand it. All right, I hope this helped.